Hello Internet and welcome to a new tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to talk about sample manipulation, a subject that we haven't talked about really on this channel and thanks to my good friend Sidrop who makes some really cool Sidrop's tutorial, you can check the, his channel following the link in the description. We're going to talk about that today. So this tutorial is going to be split into two parts. The first part, we're going to be using Ableton Live and its stock plugins. And the second one, we're going to use third-party plugins. Now, I'll be focusing on voice manipulation, but the, all of the techniques I'm going to show you are applicable on any other sample. Like, you can literally just sample whatever and you can apply these techniques to them. And the techniques I'm going to show you are meant to give you a starting point and like guidelines or like tips and tricks on how we can manipulate samples inside of Ableton. But that doesn't mean that I'll go through everything that we can do because the possibilities are endless and with all of the Max for Life devices, this tutorial will take just ages. So with that said, let's dive into Ableton. The sample that we're going to use is, well, the intro of all of my tutorials. Hello Internet, and welcome to a new tutorial. So yeah, we're going to manipulate my intro and use it as an example. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate that, and what I'm going to do, I'll just delete all of the blanks in here. So basically, I'll just start the sample from here. Delete this. It's okay if we don't cut precisely, that's not the point. Now what I'll do, I'll just try to normalize everything. Let's just delete this. I'll just try to, yeah, to normalize everything. Uh, I'm not going to use any sophisticated meters or whatever. I'll just use the eyes because we're not looking, we're not looking to be really precise at this moment. Hello Internet and welcome to a new tutorial. Okay, so the intro is a bit, isn't as loud as the others. Hello Internet and welcome. Hello Internet and welcome to a new tutorial. Hello Internet and welcome. Ah, this is good enough. So I'll consolidate everything. Uh, and I've done that by pressing on Control and J. You can do that uh, on Mac with Command and J. Anyways, uh, now we have this. Again. Now what I'm going to do, it's one of the oldest techniques, I guess. Basically, we're going to uh, choose, we're going to add warp marks. Uh, so I'm going to split most of the samples in two, something like this. Now what I'm going to do, I'll just ask it to splice to new MIDI track and I'm going to ask it to create one slice per warp mark. I'm going to leave the slicing preset to built in and I'm going to preserve warping timing. Yeah. It has created now an instrument track and then here we have like a drum rack and inside of this drum rack there's all of our slices uh, wait a second, just like so. So here's the first slice. Okay, the third one, I don't know why it sliced it like this, but it should be this. New tutorial. New, 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 Okay, we can delete the first one. And now what I'm going to do, I'll just put the 11th in here. New, new. And now what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to go to mapping and we're going to delete all of that because we are not going to use them. Basically what I've just done is I've deleted what these knobs will do because I, don't want them to do anything. Uh, and now what we're going to do, we're going to go to each sample 
we're going to set it to one shot just like so and we're going to set it on gate I'll explain why in a bit and we need to do the same thing for everyone Perfect. Now what's happening is that every time we're triggering one of the samples, it's going to play it once and and because we set it to one shot. And since we set it to tr to gate, it's going to play the sample as long that we're hitting the MIDI note. So if we hit it really fast, it's not going to play the whole sample. Unlike when it's on trigger mode. And if we hit it like just once really fast, it's going to play the whole sample. And this is actually going to give us some groove uh, because what I'm going to do, I'll just add an arpeggiator now so we can get, you know, an arp. Uh, but before that we do the arp, I'm going to go to the first sample on here and I'm going to map the transposition to attack and I'm going to just change the name. And there's something really cool about Ableton. It's a script that you can find online that when you right click on transpose, you can set map to all siblings. So what we've just done is that automatically Ableton routed all of the transposition knobs to this one, like what we've done with the first one. And now we have one general transposition control. So we can do this. New <laughs> We're already doing some weird stuff. Uh, now, what we're going to do, I'll just take off all of these slices, all of these MIDI notes. I'm going to set a MIDI note on slice number six, just like so. Actually, it should be on slice number five, just like so. And now, since we have the ARP in here, Going to play the fifth sample but wait when i'll add there's a really cool midi effect called random it's going to throw random notes the way we would like so what i'll do i'll set the choices to five so and i'll set it to bi-directional so basically it'll, it'll throw five random notes above the master midi note let's say and five below the master midi note so when i'll set the chances to 100 listen to what we'll get when i'll press play it's playing the 10 samples that we have and for sure if you have 10 uh, 12 samples you can set it to 12 you know whatever it can go up to 24 random choices so now yeah i'll just leave it to five and what i'll do in here is I'll just draw a really simple automation and listen to what we already have. Nice. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll take a random LFO in here and I'll set it to modulate the gate so we can get some groove. Pretty dope, right? So we're starting to add some weirdness and you know, like we're just using like really simple stuff inside of Ableton and we're already making some really weird stuff. And for sure we can change the warping mode of the samples. You know, I'll just leave you to experiment with that. We're going to stay on textures for now and for sure we can modulate all of these parameters and like get some extreme crazy results. But for now, let's add some effects and see where we can go with it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'll add a delay. And what I really like to do with the delay is I'll set it to time, like unsynced, but I won't try to sync it to the note that we're playing actually i'm just going to create some weird effects using the delay i'll just turn off the filter like so i'll crank that feedback a bit and i'm going to duplicate the lfo that we have in here now what i'll do i'll 
make it modulate the time. I'll set it to modulate on a slow rate, like one and fourth. I'll set it to smooth. And I'll make it modulate, yeah, I'll maybe start by five. And I don't want it to go really, really high. And now, listen to what we'll get. And still, it's going really low. And I'll make it modulate faster, like one on eight. <laughs> Let's just try to modulate the pitch a bit more, let's say, crazier. And for this, I'm going to draw an automation using my MIDI controller because it's faster and I can go crazier. <laughs> So as you can see in here, I went a bit too far. In here, I can type map in here, and it's t instead of going maximum to 48 semitones, I can set it to go to 24 semitones. Now we have this. <laughs> Now I'm going to add some delay, like so. Now let's listen to what we'll get with the kick and bass. We're already getting somewhere with the weirdness. Now let's add an EQ, like so. I'm just going to duplicate the length of the MIDI pattern here and I'll add some other effects like let's say a phaser. I'll add the phaser before the delay for now and I'm going to set it to sample and hold one and eight some amount like so and I'll give it some feedback let's see what we have. Okay, give it more poles. I'll turn off the delay for now. Okay, let's set the delay to space. Now let's turn on the delay. I'm going just to duplicate this automation so it'll be just easier for the sake of the tutorial. Perfect. Uh, now, just to make it more uh, uh, psychedelic, let's say, I'm going to add uh, another LFO, just like so. And the LFO is going to modulate the frequency of the phaser, but just a tiny bit. Like I'll set it to 50 in here, and the maximum is going to be 51. So just a tiny bit, and I'll set it to square and I think you know where I'm going with this I'll set it to a high rate yeah let's go for the maximum and let's hear what we have now Now I'm just going to leave it on space, a bit less feedback. Perfect, I'll add the delay again. 
Now let's see what we have with the kick and bass. Nice. We can go without the delay for sure. Let's just set this back to 1 16th. Now for sure we can change the the settings of the LFO and how it's modulating the time to get different results. Something like this should be interesting. And we are just starting to get the weirdness, you know, maybe we can add something else to get like even more weirdness. Uh, let's see, um, maybe a grain delay should be fun to play with. I'll turn off the main delay for now. I give it some feedback. Turn off the normal delay for now. And again, we can do the same thing, get a random LFO like so, duplicate it, take it off from what it's modulating and make it modulate the pitch like so. Uh, so. I'll set it to random like so, I'll set it to smooth. And I'll set it to modulate, say, well, one and eighth would be good. Yeah, and I'll make it modulate the spray too. Perfect. I'll re add the normal delay that we have in here and I'll set this one to lower feedback values, something like so. Now let's listen to what we have with the kick and bass.
you see the idea now we can just do something like this i'm going to insert a new audio channel and i'll record the output of this channel okay perfect uh now for sure you can take a lot of takes let's say from the f from the same one i'm just going to stick to one because i i just want to show you this really simple gating let's say technique that we have in ableton so we now we have this okay that's too loud i'm going to skip the first part Perfect. Uh, now, as you can see, it's not gated. So what I'm going to do, I'll just uh, set the warping mode to beats. I'll set it the preserve 1 and 16th, and I'm going to set it to this first one right in here. And I'm going to turn down the gating thing. Now listen to what we get. got some sort of a gate it's too bad we can't automate that but yet you get the idea we have this kind of a gatey thing now that sounds like this with the kick and bass And to be honest, if I've wanted to put it in a track, I would have just recut it, recut the whole thing. Like I'll just rearrange it something like so. Um, let me take these parts like this. Now we have like just I, I I would just recreate a groove out of what I ha what I already have. So yeah, anyways, you got the idea. I can reconsolidate that and reapply effects to it and, you know, get other results uh, using it. But, you know, the technique is the same. And now, by the way, what's lovely is that we have some sort of a percussive... percussive samples. And, you know, adding these to a drum rack will get us even further away, you know. You know what? I'm going to show you. So... I'm going to splice to new MIDI track using warp markers, Spl splicing preset built in, preserve warping marker, yes. And now we have again our slices. So again, I'm going to set them all to one shot. And now I'm going to remove everything from here. And one more time, we'll go to the first one, map it to attack. Okay, call it trans for now. And let's map all to siblings. Now what I'll do, again, an arpeggiator, a random gate on the arpeggiator. Uh, now the thing is, what I'm going to do, I'll just add a delay, the normal delay from Ableton, but now I'm going to sync it to like, make it in tune and since we're in E so the frequency of E is 41.20 as I've already showed you we need 
this really simple, uh, let's say, equation. And we should set the delay to 24.27 milliseconds and we'll and we should be in tune so 24.27 uh, and now again the same thing splice number five now we should have pretty nice Give it some feedback and let's try and wait. The classic nano style stuff, you know. And I'll just going to I'm going to draw a really, really fast automation on it. And I'll turn down the volume. I'll take off this one and now with the kick and bass we have this. By the way, something really cool, Ableton, we can mark everything and just turn it down a bit, like so. Perfect. You can try this with more percussive stuff and add tons of effects and you'll get like even further with this technique. And this this is something really awesome because sometimes all what you do is just sample and resample and resample and resample all what you're doing and you'll get like way two different results. So yeah, anyways, that's the first technique I've wanted to show you. Now, the second technique, I'll take this same uh, let's say sample that we've created in here you know the one with the warp marks and I'll just add another audio channel put it in here and what I'm going to do now I'm really going to cut but I won't pay attention to details when I cut I just want to take off these parts where there's basically no sound and I've and I'm going to try to adjust the gain by I again. It's really not the perfect ways to do it, but it's simple, effective, and I'm not looking for perfection now. Let's listen to what we have. Hello, Internet. and welcome to a new tutorial. Okay, it's, it's clicking a lot, so I'll just click on A in here, so we can have access to these faders. So A, we don't have access. A again, we have access. Now I'll just create those simple fades. So we have... Hello, Internet. And so it just, you know, the transitions are a bit smoother between these parts. Now we have this. Hello, Internet. And welcome to a new audio. Perfect, just not clicking anymore. I'll consolidate that again. Control J. And now we have this. Hello, Internet. And welcome to a new audio. Perfect. Now, here's one of the things I really love to do when I'm manipulating samples. Uh, this really helps making some really weird textures. So I'll just press on shift till we have this uh, symbol, in, symbol in here, like flesh and some sort of a bracket. I don't know. Anyways, and I'll just drag the sample like so. Now let's listen to what we what we already have. Okay, already some really weird stuff going on. We can change the warping mode. Yeah, pretty nice playing with the transposition in here. Let's set it to tones. Set it to complex pro. I'm just going to leave it on textures for now.
Now what I'm going to do, I'll go in the clip settings in here and I'll just play with the transposition. And this is like an automation inside of the clip, which is kind of dependent from the automations we draw in here, uh, you know, on the channel. Uh, so I'm just going to do some really weird stuff like so. I'm not going to go really high because like brown 20, 24 semitones start to get like really nasty on the high end and high harmonics and I don't want that. I just want something weird. Pretty nice, I really like that. So what I'm going to do, I'll duplicate it, because I might use it again, and now I'll consolidate it again. So what it's going to do, it's going to render it with all the stuff that we've added to it, so we can add more effects. That's pretty dope. Now let's transpose it a bit. Maybe add beats. Okay, no, that's just too much. I'm going to leave it like so for now. But we can actually just, you know, remove this part, let's say, from it, and we can just stretch it again. Perfect. We we already have tons of weirdness going on. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'll use other effects. And this is a really, really cool effect that we have inside of Ableton called the frequency shifter. So I'll just add the frequency shifter in here. Play with the parameters a bit. I think you've heard it over there. What, what I'm going to do, I'll just take an LFO, like so. I'll add it to the rate, and I'll set it to sample and hold. Yeah, random. But I won't make it modulate like really crazy values. I'll set it to one on eight, and I'll smooth it up, and now I have this. to give it like 12 semitones or something. Or maybe stretch it back to the way it was and just set the sample the way it was. Because it's already crazy. Let's see what we already have with the kick and bass. Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to stop modulating it. already pretty dope uh, for sure we can add other effects you know what I'm going to use the delay that we've used in here because is it because it was pretty pretty fun let me just take off all of this LFO in here, set this one to something reasonable, like uh, maybe one bar. pretty dope we can we can for sure take uh, okay maybe take this one because we still have the automation on it and maybe change its change the transposition in here something like so You got the idea we will just take the sample stretch it out consolidate it add effects and maybe you know after adding all of this effect i'll just take off the delay in here i'll duplicate the channel and you know what i'll just consolidate everything just like so i'll just you know i'll, I'll take off the eq and i'll freeze it and I'll flatten it and now we have this perfect now we have everything in here and now we can go to the the third and final technique i've wanted to show you in this tutorial so now we have the sample in here let's consolidate it this the sample that has everything on it all of the crazy stuff and i want to take to get this hello internet again and i'm going to i didn't preserve the original in here which is too bad I'm going to take off the blank spaces again. Again, I'm not going to be precise. Get the fades like so. So I'm going to take it like so, consolidate it again. Now we have this. Perfect. Now we're going to use one of the most underrated plugins which is called wavetable so this is you know a wavetable synthesizer from ableton now the first thing i want to go to my sample folder in here and i'm going to add a new folder and i'll just throw these samples inside of this folder in here uh, now i'll go to the wavetable 
synthesizer. Okay, now it has this basic shapes thing. I'll go to the samples in here, consolidate it, and now. I'll add my voice in it and it'll turn it to a wavetable. Or I'll add the affected one, like so. It really doesn't matter which sample you're going to use. Now we have everything inside of wavetable and now we have our wavetable. We can apply all crazy stuff to it. I think you got the idea. Now we can do literally whatever we like. It's inside of a synthesizer. What we're he hearing right now is basically my voice. Let's try to make a really simple squelch. Because squelch is life. Let's take off the release it's going to be a really simple squelch Yeah, I'm going to add a little phone on that. And the LFO, I'm going to set it to triangle one on one bar should be good. Maybe half a bar. Modulating, it's modulating too much. There, some really weird squalls. But you, I think you got the idea. Yeah. And with this, this is the end of our tutorial. I really hope you've liked it. I really hope you've learned something new. And if so, and you want to help me make more psychedelic tutorials and more psychedelic music, please consider becoming one of my patrons. Have a great one.